Today we will perform a transient motion analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. This analysis will involve the creation of joints to define accurate movement of mechanical systems. We will simulate a double wishbone suspension system. A time dependent displacement loading will be applied on the parts and the subsequent motion and stresses developed in the assembly will be visualized during post processing. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall setup process. The first step is to assign a material and property to all the components in the model. We will also create RBE2 rigid elements to accurately define the locations for constraint and impose displacement application. Once the geometry is imported into Hypermesh, three components are visible in the model browser. The upper wishbone, lower wishbone and a knuckle. Let's start by creating a new material. Provide a name to this material. We will enter the default mechanical properties of steel. Now create a new property and provide a name to it. As we are using solid components, change the card image to P solid. Now assign the steel material in proper selection box. We will assign this property to all the components in the model. The material gets assigned automatically. To define the constraint and load locations, create a new component. This collector will be used to store RBE2 rigid elements. Let's mesh the model. Open the Tetramesh tab from 3D panel. Switch the radio button to volume tetra. With entity selection box on solids, select all the solids. Let's change the 2D type to R triads. We will use element size value as 5. Toggle to elements to surface or solid component and create the mesh. Switch to shaded elements view for better visualization of the mesh. Now open the rigid tab from 1D panel. Set dependent node to multiple nodes and independent node to calculate node. Change the selection type to faces. Let's select the internal face of this pin joint and create a rigid element. Similarly, create another rigid at the second location. Do this for the ball joint location as well. To specify upper connection point of ball joint, we will create a rigid on this face of the knuckle. Let's do the same on the upper side. For the upper wishbone, we need to change the face angle as all the required nodes are not getting selected. Create the rigid. Now create the rigid elements for pin joint locations on the upper wishbone. Let's enter a very low value for face angle. Now select the internal wall of the knuckle and create a rigid element. Hide the geometry for all components to visualize the mesh properly. Now we can start with the most crucial part of the analysis setup, the creation and editing of joints. We will create two ball joints to connect the wishbones to the knuckle component. The motion of these joints will be restricted within a predefined range by editing the joint properties. Let's start by creating the one dimensional joints. Create a new component to store joint elements and provide a name to it. We will also create a property for the joints.
change the card image to P joint G. As we are using a ball joint, all translational degrees of freedom are already constrained. We will define the maximum rotations allowed on all rotational degrees of freedom. Check the box next to stop lock and enter 3 in the below field. For the first field, set limit to lock and DOF as 4. We will set the lower bound and upper bound at minus 11.5 and 11.5 degrees respectively. In the second field, set limit as lock and DOF as 5. Enter the same values for lower and upper bounds. Lastly, in the third field, set limit as lock and DOF as 6. Use the same values for this entry. Assign this property to the joints component. Now we can start creating the joints. Open the joints tab from 1D panel. Let's change the joint type to ball. As first grid, select the master node of upper wishbone rigid. As second grid, select the corresponding node on knuckle. Let's create the lower ball joint. For first grid, select the master node of lower wishbone rigid. Select knuckle node as second grid. We have created the required joints for this analysis. We have finished modeling the mechanical system with joints at required locations. Now we can start setting up the boundary conditions for this transient analysis. A time dependent imposed displacement will be applied to the knuckle component. The wishbone mounting points will be fixed in space and the resultant motion of the assembly will be observed during post processing. Let's take a look at how this is done. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the Constraints tab from Analysis panel. With all degrees of freedom checked, let's create a constraint on the knuckle rigid master node. This constraint will later be overridden by imposed displacement boundary condition. Now select the pin joint location on lower wishbone. Also select the upper mounting locations. Uncheck degree of freedom 5 to allow rotation along y axis and create the constraints. Create a new curve to specify time dependent displacement loading. Provide a name to it. Let's enter the displacement values over a total runtime of 4 seconds. Close the curve editor. Now select the curve in model browser. We will change the card image to table D1. Create a new load collector to store SPCD data. Open the constraints tab from analysis panel. Uncheck all degrees of freedom. Now check box next to DOF3 that is translation along Z axis and enter value as 1. We will switch the load type to SPCD. Select the master node of knuckle rigid and create the SPCD load. Let's create a load collector to assign time dependent data to SPCD. Change the card image to T load 1.
In the excited field, select the SPCD load collector. Set the type to displacement. Now select the load curve in TID selection box. The time dependent loading has been defined. Let's create a load step to run this transient analysis. Change the analysis type to transient direct. Select the SPC load collector in SPC field. In the D load entry, assign the T load 1 load collector. Right click on T step time and create edit to define the time stepping controls. Change the card image to T step. We will use 100 steps of 0 0.04 second increment which amounts to a total run time of 4 seconds. Press Ctrl F and add parameter card to the model. Let's disable element quality check for this analysis using the check L option. We will enable hash assembly solving method. Let's also enable the nonlinear animation file and nonlinear monitoring cards. Now add the global output requests card to extract specific results from the analysis. Check box next to displacement and set format as H3D. We will also output grid point forces for all locations using GP force option. Do the same for strain and stress results. The analysis setup is now complete and we can run the transient analysis using Optistruct Solver. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Open the Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set Export options to All and Run options to Analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. Based on the hardware specifications available, this may take a lot of time to solve. Once the analysis run is complete, we can view the results using Hyperview. Select the H3D file from working directory. Apply the results. Let's hide the results component as we are not interested in the results obtained for these elements. Open the Contours tab and apply the displacement results. We will switch to transient animation mode. The animation speed can be adjusted using the bottom slider. Play the animation. We can clearly see the displacement of the assembly according to the time dependent loading curve. Change the result type to element stress and set averaging method as simple. Apply the results. The stress plots for all the components can be visualized. To view data in graphical format, let's split the window in two parts. In the second window, change template to hypergraph 2D. Click on create curves.
In the multiple inputs tab, specify the location of the run directory. Now select the h3d file and add it to the list. Select this file. In the x source tab, make sure that time is selected. In y source, select type as displacement. We will query the node id for knuckle rigid master node. Let's select the z component and plot the graph. Close the curve editor. Go to the axis tab to adjust the graph. Select the vertical axis from drop down. In the scale and tick speed, we will change the lower and upper limit values to minus 25 and 25 for better visualization. The time dependent displacement is now clearly visible. We have also achieved the necessary ball joint motion at required locations in the suspension assembly. And this is how we can perform a transient motion analysis using Hypomesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.